So I will now ask our keynote speaker, Captain Abdul Karim Al Masabi, the Chief Executive of Adnoc Logistics and Services, who's well known to all of you. I don't need to introduce him too much because uh, he, he's well known to everybody. So Abdul Karim, I'd like to invite you on stage to give the keynote speech. Thank you very much. I would like to start by thanking the TMS uh, conference organizers for inviting me to present today and to participate in the ins this insightful discussions, which comes at a pivotal point, as Clive has have, have highlighted, for tanker sector. And I think uh, today we have a very busy agenda ahead of us with many key trends that are quite literally taking our industry by storm, if I would describe it. The tanker industry, despite all the global challenges, is powering ahead. As our industry reaches new highs, it is important to reflect because the road ahead is not an easy one to travel. When we met this time last year, the global tanker fleet growth shrank to its lowest level since 2018 to just 2%. The crude sector was massively impacted and the majority of crude tonnage was forced to operate at sub zero levels for a long time. At that time, I could see a lot of doubt around the room and around the industry. And most vessels owners and charterers I engaged with felt uneasy about a market that could remain uncertain for the full of 2022. But I have always believed that fortunes favors the braves. And so at Adnoc Logistics and Services, we continued investing in our tanker fleet renewal at a moment that made perfect sense to us economically. Bold action, especially in tough times, can pay off well, and it did very well for us. Fast forward a few months, we were looking at a completely different picture. VLCC earnings remained depressed through the year of 2021 until mid of 2022, and then it hit a 22-month high this month with over $90,000 a day. The sustained high rates are leading to a further improvement in sentiment going into the final quarter of this year, and several dynamics are propelling the tanker market to highs not previously anticipated. And we are seeing the strongest market in decades, and tanker shipping market is expected to increase to 164.1 million tons from 21 to 26 and the market's growing momentum will accelerate at a CAGR of 4.59%. A combination of factors with geopolitics at the heart has led to this surge and significant increase in average ton miles. Changing global trade flows have increased sailing distance and ton miles, and we are seeing a complete different change in the routes today, east-west, and even from West to the Middle East as well. These are completely new for us. Another actor in the global trends is China's economic performance. And compared to 21, China's total import have remained flat. Excessive COVID controls have impacted mobility and production. Europe might see a warmer than usual winter, and that can impact demand for fuels in the critical months ahead. But while uncertainties remain, I believe that everything points towards a solid strengthening of the crude market in 2023, and higher freight rates, time charter rates, and second-hand ship prices, which we are actually seeing as of today. We are firmly on the rise, and this gives us a bandwidth to examine the bigger picture. There is a general expectation that global oil demand and its transportation will likely peak within the next 10 years. And ADNOC's position on this is clear. We need continued investment in traditional energy sources and by default their transportation to be able to fund the energy transition and reduce emissions. This sets the tone for ADNOC logistic and service direction and our mandate is very clear. Maximum energy, minimum emissions. It does not need to be one or the other. Our industry is often seen 
in extreme terms, boom or bust, spikes and plunges. This is very much our normal life. Right now, tanker supply and demand dynamics looks very positive, with the best fleet supply fundamental seen in more than 25 years. We do not know this will change, but right now we have the ability to think ahead and invest in mitigating some of the existential issues facing us. The speed of advancement in technology, which Clive just highlighted, will need to keep pace with tighter regulations by IMO going forward. With increased regulations over the coming decades, research efforts will need to remain robust and global shipping industry must continue to fund these efforts, which could accelerate a te technological breakthrough in the shipping industry. Only then, we can start building a global marine sector that looks very different from that of today and one that defines not only our future, but also our legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. invite uh, the Managing Director of the Maritime Standard, Trevor Pereira, onto the stage to make a small presentation to our keynote speaker. Come onto the stage, Trevor, welcome. All the today's speakers onto the stage and we can have a group photo now.